Granny's Clan, A Tale of Wild Orcas by Dr. Sally Hodson, illustrated by Ann Jones. A Tale of Wild Orcas. In cold, dark waters, a tiny newborn struggles to breathe. Little one, I am here to help. Granny slips beneath her littlest great-grandchild. With a gentle push, she lifts him to the surface. The baby opens his blowhole and takes his first breath. A new life begins, an old life continues. Granny guides the baby to his mother, Samish. At his mother's side, the baby floats. They breathe and swim as one. Granny calls the family to welcome the newborn. Suttles meets her baby brother. Mako greets his baby cousin. Near Granny rises the huge wavy fin of her son, Ruffles. One by one, each of the family surfaces to breathe. Whoosh! 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 Loud blasts of air and mist explode from each blowhole. Voices of the family surround the little one with songs of the Orca clan. Mothers and grandmothers, daughters and sons, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, grandsons and granddaughters gather to celebrate. The family travels on. They dive together. They rise together. They breathe together. They call to each other to keep the family together. They search for salmon to fill their hungry bellies. Without salmon, Granny's family cannot live. For a hundred summers and a hundred winters, the sea has shared her secrets with Granny. Granny knows where salmon swims when tides change or when winds shifts or waters warm or winter storms blow. With Granny in the lead, the family spreads out to hunt. They swim through ribbons of dancing brown kelp among seals searching for rockfish, near an octopus clutching a crab, above sea stars stretched over rocks, close to pelicans, diving for fish snacks, under jellyfish drifting with the tides. They swim past herons, stalking on stick legs, beside sea otters dining on urchins, over hermit crabs hiding in seashells, around seabirds surfing on breakers, beneath bald eagles soaring with winds by a humpback whale playing in the waves. Each of the family sends out beams of sonar clicks, they listen as their sounds bounce off rocks, fish, and sea life. Echo, echo, echo. The echoes return as pictures made of sounds in their brain. In darkness, that helps them be able to see how big, far, fast, and what shape. Shark to the right, squid to the left, salmon ahead. With a burst of speed, they overtake the salmon. Calls to each other flow back and forth. Tail flukes slap the sea with thunder. Swirls of silver salmon flee. Empty orca bellies fill. At the edge of the hunt, Samish watches. Her rich milk feeds the newborn at her side. Ruffles catches a fish that tries to hide in the kelp. To Samish, he offers the gift of a salmon. A call from Granny brings young Suttles and Mako to her. Both want to learn to be great hunters of salmon. With Granny's help, they learn to see outside and inside of shapes all around them. They scan swift currents for echoes of salmon. They learn the sounds of each salmon clown, of sockeye, of coho, of chum, and chinook. A salmon darts out from the safety of the rocks. Who will be the first to catch it? In a great rush, Suttles dashes after the fish, but the shimmering salmon slides out of her grasp into the waiting jaws of Mako. Bitten in two, the fish is shared by the young hunters. Graceful sailboats groan, swift sweet speedboats whine, stout fairies clang, busy fishing boats chug, Huge tankers rumble. Noise drowns out the family's calls to each other. Toward the family, many boats rush. Louder they howl, faster they rush. Suttles and Mako still play in the waves. A speedboat races towards them. To the left, it zigs. To the right, it zags. Closer and closer, the speedboat zooms. Propeller blades scream of danger. Dive, dive. So you gotta be careful when the boats come by. When they hear the family's warning, the cousins vanish beneath the waves. With a roar, the speedboat leaps, leaps over them. A boat with a flag reaches the speedboat and guides it away. So these guys came over and told the speedboat, no, you can't swim over, you can't ride your boat over there, there's whales. The other boats slow down and quiet their engines. Suttles and Mako swim close to Granny's side. Around them hover boats with people, filled with people watching them. The cousins swim with Granny through the maze.
The cousins swim with Granny through the maze of boats. Granny spy hops. Mako spins a cartwheel. Suttles flips a headstand. The people laugh and clap, whistle and shout. The children wave their arms at Suttles and Mako. The children wave their fins at the children. I mean, the cousins wave their fins at the children. The whales are waving their fins. The family seeks rest in a quiet cove. They gather close together and drift with the waves. Soft calls flow from one to another. They doze, they dream, they remember to breathe. Boom, crash, splat. Noises from the splashes awaken the family. Mako's and Subtle burst from the water, not ready to take a nap. Each tries to jump higher, faster, farther. Granny calls the noisy players to join her beneath the waves they created. Far below the sleeping family, Granny teaches the young ones the songs of the Orca clan. As Granny's lullaby ends, the singers return to quiet rest with the family. When the family awakens, Granny sings the, the clan song of coming together. Through miles of deep water canyons, Granny's powerful voice travels to find the other clan families. From near and far, each family answers the eldest clan grandmother with their own family call. We are coming. All the clan families, mothers and grandmothers, daughters and sons, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, grandsons and granddaughters come together again. A great super pod gathers. They greet old friends. They welcome new babies. They remember lost ones. They celebrate togetherness. So... Just like you might get together and have like a family reunion with all your big family, so whales do that too. Orca whales do that too. Sounds of play fill the air and water. They mingle and touch, tumble and roll, spy hop and somersault. Fins splash, tails slap, bellies flop. Upside down tails wave in the wind. Mako wraps kelp around his tail flukes and fins. Subtle balances a fish on her head. And friends, scientists have really seen orcas really do like to play. They like to jump and roll and they'll play with seaweed or they'll play uh, with fish, kind of like a dog with a treat. With the flick of her tail, Granny slides beneath the waves. Deeper and deeper into the darkness she dives. When she reaches the sea bottom, she streaks towards the light. Water explodes beneath her as she leaps from the sea. When she can fly no higher, she spins twirls and returns to the sea. Water and wind bring distant voices to Granny. Not songs of other orca clans hunting for seals. Not songs of porpoises fishing for herring. Not songs of salmon searching for home. Granny knows those other voices that call now. Standing on the rocky shoreline, people of all ages sing to honor the orcas. Swimming along the rocky shoreline, orcas of all ages sing their songs to the people. With Suttles, Mako, and the family beside her, Granny sings songs of her orca clan. Voices from the sea mingle in harmony with the voices from the land. To people and, orca, the gift, and orcas, the gift of friendship returns. No longer do they fear one another. Now they sing songs together and share the seas. So friends, um, this, the, that's the end of the story part of this book, but this part uh, has more facts and things in this book okay and what it's telling you is that this this book is actually about a real orca family okay so it says meet the family granny Suttles, mako and their family are real wild orcas who live in the seas of the pacific northwest scientists believe that granny is about 100 years old she is a great grandmother and knows many important things to help her family for, survive Granny's clan is a group of three related families that travel together and share the same language. And that's her pod, okay? If you are an orca in Granny's clan, you live your entire life with your mom's family. They have never been seen fighting each with each other. They help each other and they share their food. So then on these pictures it has, this is Granny's fin, what it looks like. This is Ruffles' fin, that's how they identify them. They look at their fins and their coloring, okay? So it's actually pretty neat that these um, these orcas are real orcas that people really do go and see. And then here's in the back our picture of our author and our illustrator. So this is our author who wrote this story. 
Um, and she has, she's a doctor, but not like a doctor that takes care of you, a doctor who went to a lot of school, and she knows a lot about all different kinds of animals. And she is um, in charge of a whale museum, and that's why she's decided to write this book. And then this, the illustrator used to be a teacher, and then she decided to become an illustrator, which is really cool.